Whoa, it's Woolsey. I'm on my alt account, Dan's Woman, again. Welcome back to the co-op building series, Level Swap. Today I've got Jonathan with me. Say hi, John. Yo, what's up? The it's creator me. of Dark Odyssey, dude. We're big yeah. time now. <laughs> this is Level Swap. Jonathan and I are both going to start brand new levels, but every 20 minutes we must pass our levels over to each other until we've had three turns building on each level. The end goal is to make a functional part of a level, and in our building time we're going to both split up and record individually to keep the mojo of the video. So make sure that you watch the other side if you want to see their perspective too. And uh, yeah, is there anything you have to say before we start, John? Yeah, I think I have never done this before. I literally haven't really recorded uh, any kind of this content. <laughs> so yeah, this is gonna be really interesting. No pressure at all, right? <laughs> We're gonna start this in three, two, one. Let's go. I have never been more nervous to record a video in my life, dude. We're using the song Shell by Laps, my good old trusty Newgrounds artist that I fall back on every time I need a challenge or something. We're using this start off set 143.5. It's really nice. And I think John's gonna work pretty well with it. Boom, 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 boom. And then a small jump right there to stabilize yourself and flip your gravity once again. I think that's cool. I'm trying to continue this sticky platform thing all the way through this UFO part. I'm giving him some copy paste opportunities here already. <laughs> we matched up the ship and UFO borders. Nice. I think it's looking pretty open. I've left John enough room for him to make himself some more structures if he needs it. I also know he's a creator that works well with ground spikes like the little black ones down here. So I'm interested to see what kind of style he goes for with this. I'm still trying to keep this gameplay where you sit on top of the block all sweet like that. So a few things I've added, I've put a hide trigger right on the very end because the song has a noise as you end. You see right there. I've also put a yellow jump ring right here to help you boost yourself up through that gap since the ship has a slow acceleration when you hold up. Hopefully that'll give you the boost that you need in order to get up to the top. As always, I'm gonna give them a couple of details to work with. Just a few subtle things that can get binned if John doesn't want them. I'm gonna give him a block transition, a few connector pieces on the edges of some blocks. So this is Dark God Easy. <laughs> Uh, the gameplay is actually really flowy. I really like it. It's well indicated with the circles and obviously there's the repeated gimmick that you slide along the blocks like that. I think it's sick. It's not too difficult. It's nice to sight read as well. So I'm also going to add these little slab looking things to the bottoms of some objects. Just the floating ones, nothing else. Just to make them look a bit more worked into the level. And that's 20 minutes, bro. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I finished, I finished like 16 seconds, by the way. Yeah, I got 16 too. Yeah. Downloading the song right now. All right, I'll play Uganda while you do that. All right, let's All right. see. Okay. Let's see. Let's see the gameplay on this level. Ooh, you put speed changes. I see. I focus a lot on sync, <laughs> by the way. I see. So, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that, that's what I do for gameplay. But yeah. Oh, you I killed it. Nice. The only problem is I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> Good luck, dude. All right, group one, alpha trigger, zero opacity, always. I've made a glow beam on the bottom, which is black blending, AKA invisible. We're gonna set that to a new group two. At the beginning, it's gonna lock onto the X axis for a very long time, pretty much forever. I'm gonna make it pulse to a light green. Then I'm gonna give this a new ID three, and three is gonna move upwards right as you hit this speed portal. It's gonna move upwards by two blocks, just like that. We can definitely copy paste this, build helper, set it to a new editor layer and repeat that. The reason I needed it on a new editor layer is because it needs to stay in the same space since it's getting locked to the X axis. Just let me get this pulse right. All right, so that's pulsing three times right there. Looks good to me. After each movement and pulse has happened, I can copy these move triggers and just set them back down to their original position like this and repeat the same movement on the next section of the song. I've set the objects to black, then I'm gonna select all the pulse triggers and set them to pulse the objects the same as those glow beams. Then I'm gonna have a design made up of two parts, one with a group six that's gonna pulse white at the same time and one with an object that's gonna copy the color of those flashing objects. That's just gonna be layered on top like that. Make sure I put in the flash for group six to white, which is FFF. I'm also gonna extend this to a one second fade out. So it's a bit more climactic than the rest. So this square is layered on B4 and minus seven. I'm gonna copy the values of that, get a slope object. We're gonna paste this state on there, increase the Z order by one. So it's on top, give it a new group seven. Seven is gonna be half opacity. And this slope is gonna be black. It's just gonna sit in between and it's gonna give that a bit of texture. If it doesn't pulse, get rid of six. 
There we go. Gives it a bit more texture. Then we're going to link the three objects together with the link controls that I've apparently just lost. And we need to move very quickly because we are running out of time. For the floating objects that John set out, I'm going to make a checkerboard pattern with these, as you can see. So we can thread another design in there. Similarly to how I've left space underneath here, there's probably going to be another design under there. In this ball corridor, there's no pulses. I want to change that with group six, the base object that we added earlier. I just need to line up the duration lines to the edge of this ball corridor like that perfectly you can see it lines up with those pulses then at the same time the background can go dark just like that just need to add a couple of changes for the object nice okay that's cool i just need to add a couple more designs towards the end to give jonathan more to work off of I'm also going to fix that transition because it's quite annoying. Apparently these D blocks just don't like me. So I'm going to space them up a little bit just in case they're like glitching. I'm adding some slabs right here that copy the color of the object. But they also have that pulse in group 6. So when you go through the tunnel they kind of go white. I think it looks sick. I'm about to run out of time man. I've got 10 seconds left. I know I haven't done much. But hopefully John will be able to bounce off what I've done. And it'll be worthwhile at least. There we go. Oh dude. I've not been able ah. to do much. I don't know. Maybe the checkerboard pixel thing was a bit strange. But... You live and you learn, don't you? Let's see. All right, oh. I'm gonna play level. <laughs> I see what you mean with the transition. You did so much. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, I copy paste, but I literally said in my thing like I'm gonna give him so much opportunity to copy paste right now. On, what? On I like how you top. put lol underneath. <laughs> Good luck. First things first. I'm gonna put don't fade, don't enter, just to make sure that those gradient objects don't like cut off at the sides. Then I'm gonna line the bottom with these ground spikes that copy the same as the object. It's on color channel two, like that. Oh, there's a big open space at the bottom here. What I'm gonna have to do is probably combine two different types of ground spikes. So these are the flat ones that are simple to implement, but I could add some like slopey ones with these objects or something. I don't know. I was hoping that he would maybe add a few more structures, but it's fair enough because what he's done is pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna make big long pulses for color channel 2 to white. So probably 0.5 and mm, 1.5, something like that. Oh, but he set the glow to color channel 2 as well. Hold on, let me fix this. Let's give it a next free group. 9, perfect. That's my normal black color. <laughs> I want to experiment though, because John has some pretty dark colors changing at the top right here. I could probably set these pulses to like a brighter version of one of those. There we go. That makes it a bit more colorful instead of just plain boring old white. I'm trying out some slope deco right where the ground spikes are. Need a new editor layer for this. Probably eight. I don't know. John's is like five billion different ones. There, it looks pretty good in game, actually. I was quite hesitant looking at it in the editor because it looks so weird. In the background, I'm going to start adding strips like this on a very slight background difference, like 0 0.02. They're going to be four blocks wide, so two scaled up objects wide. They're going to be on a new group three and whatever John's moving group is. One. <sighs> Oh, it kind of annoys me that group one isn't the alpha trigger, but whatever. So there's this one here. We're going to copy it, move it two blocks to the left, change the editor layer and the Z order by one. And then in the HSV tab, we're going to decrease the brightness by another 0.02. So you can see a slight difference there. So we're getting a slight gradient there, even when the background changes, because it copies the color at all times. I forgot to make sure they're all on different groups, man. God damn it. They're just going to kind of wobble outwards. So it's moving two blocks to the right on the bottom layer. Then a few blocks later, the next one moves. You know, it's kind of like a staggered movement outwards like that, you can see. Then I can probably ease in a two-second movement where they move 30 objects back. Then I can keep repeating the same movements over and over again with ease out one second and 30 this time. And then copy the second set. So the first set is like the initialization of the background and then these ones is like the continuation. Then on the last one, we can probably just make an ease in movement for four seconds that just moves them completely off the screen. All right, I've changed the easings to ease in out because it looks nicer. And I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna have this on don't fade, don't enter so it didn't cut off at the left hand side. But I kind of like how blocky it looks right there. And the ending is clean. For now, I'm gonna make a blending screen with don't fade, don't enter this time. It's gonna go above everything. The next free group, black blending. It's just gonna cover the whole thing and lock to the X axis with everything else. With these pulse triggers, I think I'm gonna change the timings on them. So that's group six is getting changed to probably copy color channel three. Also, yes, I'm aware I gave it group two instead of group one. I'm not used to using group one for anything. And now it's way too bright. So we need to go back to these pulse triggers. 
There we go. So now the whole level has this colored tint to it that makes it feel a bit more Jonathan-y. On group one and group four, T3 again. I'm putting a glow strip on the right hand side so it's gonna wobble with the rest and it's gonna make it look a bit more colorful. Okay, I did it. It looks good, doesn't it? Now we should wait for John to unmute. Watch this, he's gonna do it in the middle of this attempt. No? All right. Oh, here he is. <laughs> oh, Ooh, I, think, I think the background is kind of sick. Oh, like... you made a background? Okay. Saw blades. What? How did they not kill me? Ooh. <laughs> Dude, you killed it with the fire. Oh my god. That's sick. Look at the scale. Oh. If you place the orb, a black orb, and then you click on the edit special, yeah. it shows the allow multi activate, right? Yeah. So you place another black orb, and then you select all like two black orbs at once and oh. then you click edit special what <laughs> oh my god no way oh that's actually a thing good luck dude 3d line rotate cram it all the way off the left side of the block give it a new group and set it to black blending right there then i need to copy give it a new group move it one step to the right just keep on doing this until the full block is done it should be 15 objects we started on group 15 so we should end on group 29. All right, so in line with all of these pulses, I'm gonna start a new one with group 15 at the front. Very small fade in time, very short fade out time. Copying the background color on full brightness, as you can see right there. I think it looks pretty sweet. Then I copy paste up, move it one step to the right, increase the group number, and just keep this going all the way until group 29. So that should be 15 triggers. Yep, let's see how it looks on this block over here. Boom. Okay, maybe it should be a little bit less bright because it almost goes to white right there. The pulses on this object are just gonna happen at the same time as all the other pulses in the level. And then in the ball corridor, it's gonna get flipped and copy pasted four times at the same time as those. Then I'm gonna link this object together and copy it around inside the blocks and also elsewhere as extra decoration. There we go. So we got like a little pulsing decoration here. I can also flip it to get a nice effect that is mirrored on the inside. I noticed that in the long corridors, these don't really get a chance to extend outwards because the pulse time is so stacked with one another. You can see in the duration line that they're kind of overlapping. So for the backwards pulses, I want to decrease the fade time outwards from a 0.5 to a 0.1. Now I'm going to use these pulsing groups for some cool glow decoration on the orbs and some of the portals as well. I don't know why this is so far up like that. That looks weird. Obviously, I'm going to switch up the group for the portal and the orb so they're not the same. Pretty sure I already used this idea in my one hour building challenge update, but I only did that on stream. I didn't do it in a video. So I think it's justified that I redo the same idea where I have a small arrow on 0.5 scale that has one group of it. Then the next one is 0.05 scale up just continuously like this. So you get a massive flashing arrow with a bunch of different groups and stuff. Then for the last four groups, I'm going to scale up by 0.25 just so we get a massive range. Just look how cool that looks in the editor, man. God damn. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I need to give you a... I kind of forgot about that part. Ooh, nice Ooh. saws. Okay. So let's play. Ooh, 7.8k up just already. <laughs> yeah, the, the lines are a lot. That's such a clever way to make saw blades. Oh my god. Okay, I am on a mission to fix the spikes. We're going on 9 and 9 and a new group, 23. Speed run mode, we got them all put in. Now we need to make the original ones invisible. Oh, that's actually sick because they get tinted by the blending screens that we put in earlier. Let's go. Just while it was on my mind, I've added another layer to this background that we put on earlier just to make it a bit more bright on the right hand side. On this one, it's hue plus 180 and I gave it an extra group, group 5, which also wiggles around with the other side. So you get a mixture of color on the right hand side now instead of just one single hue. Makes it look a bit more interesting in my opinion. So for every bum 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 in the song, we're going to add a pulse trigger for the main only of this group, which is 23, if I remember correctly. Just a quick pulse, 0 0.05 and 0.5. You can see it acting on the spikes right there. If I just continue this with every beat. Then I've made a copy of these pulse triggers, again for group 23. This time on detail only, white again. The fade in is 0.5, the fade out is one, it's longer. We're gonna move it to the right a little bit like that. So we get a varied look to the spike that's just constantly changing in its base and its outline, and it's all getting tinted by the blending above it, so none of it's like an ugly gray that's gonna stand out negatively or anything like that. I think it looks sick. There we go. That's making it look a lot more uplifted, especially if I add some other details that have the same
same main and detail kind of format to it. That's gonna look a lot more in place. I think it's gonna look nice. We're gonna add it to the outlines and the slabs that are on these blocks. As long as I make sure that they are initially on black like everything else. I don't think any part of this level is gonna look nice on a freeze frame, but what did John do here? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to make a little pathway of these because there's no like stopping you skipping the gameplay at all. There we go. You shouldn't be able to avoid that. It looks so stupid, but it's gonna have to do. There we go. That's looking a lot more connected now. Let's test the little bridge. It's fine. It's absolutely fine, dude. I just need to add a few more pulses for the background and stuff that kind of fit in with these at the same time. Okay, so we copy the top line. We're gonna make color channel three and four go up in their brightness and saturation on these beats. You can see it very briefly take an effect on the blocks up there. But then the background and the objects that copy the color of the background on group 10, or color 10, my God, are gonna go down a notch like that. So it's a nice contrast between the white and the dark background. Hey, this is coming together. Let's go. Then above everything, I'm going to add some glow beams. I do this a lot, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. I want to add some atmosphere. I want to make the blocks a bit more illuminated. These are on T3. They're on black blending with the same group 23 as the other pulses. So they're not always visible. I'm not just plaguing the level with unnecessary glow right now. I think this is just going to look nice. It's just a bit of white. Yeah, it's not going to get in the way, is it? It's low opacity as well. You can see it fading on and off screen. I don't know how to feel about that. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I've made an ending transition. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's You're gonna see. be so impressed by it. Oh, disco lasers. Oh, I'm here for this. Dude, this one's sick. <laughs> oh, nice transition. It's just gone. <laughs> I told you Everything you'd be impressed. Is gone. Oh, you made a proper ending. Thank you. Yeah, I was about to make it move, but again, yeah. No time. The final one, dude. The final one. Final round. Here we go. <laughs> it's 20 blocks wide. Okay, so we need to copy paste this, put it on a new group 40, then move 40 outwards by another 200 on the X, zero move time. So when I put a start pause right here, it should extend really far. Good. I don't really understand this grouping, so I'm just gonna make new ones. <laughs> 41 and then 42 for the top end initially we're gonna move them up and down out of their positions I've moved them 50 up and 50 down out of the way and then they can slowly move up towards the player to end the level for like Two seconds. Maybe if I just start the movement before My game crashed <laughs> Ow. I'm also going to do the same thing that I did in the other level add everything to a group 43 fade that off 0.1 this time because at the same time there's going to be a flash for the background that goes to white on a 0.1 fade in and a point uh, one second fade out I mean so it's like you're waving you're waving and then boom oh. Bang! I like that ending. I'm reusing the flashy groups again. Only three of them this time, just to make a couple of slopes inside the wave. So the outer one is 15, the inner one is 29, and then there's one in between on a middle scale that is 22. I just need to make the original slope group one. I'm just gonna remove these little slabs because I never found a use for them. Instead, I'm probably gonna continue these little slopes in a pattern like this to kind of connect the structures together. Because I like the way that looks when it links together like that. I'm placing a saw blade right here on 60 degree rotation same rules apply hey they look cool just rotating in place right there i'm staggering some glow pieces with two gap groups right there so it's jumping from 15 to 17 to 19 not using them all to save objects and to not close spam i don't mind if this is really unfinished because i feel like the whole purpose of level swap is to have like a billion ideas in one level that aren't necessarily complete. I have to say this every time because it always ends up in shambles like this. Just adding some extra details now, like these big slope objects right here, you can see. I think this is decent. We've got like two minutes left, so I'm just gonna have to hand this in as it is. The glow isn't even that noticeable, see? The whole level is just so bright anyway. I like this one. I don't know, it's weird, but it's good. And then the clean ending. Nice. Then at the end, I guess I should add an end screen for Yuga Nda. We might as well set this to white blending since that's pretty iconic of this level. Hey. And that's that. Oh my god. That is it. Oh. Mid and end screen. <laughs> nice. It's so um, bad. Hey, oh, this oh, actually oh. looks finished. It actually looks finished, dude. Oh my god. Nice. I love these big pulsing rings that you use all the time. 
Hey, this is good. I love it, dude. Yeah. This is the better one, I think. Yeah, there was a spike and something too low, but you put that there and it actually kills you. <laughs> it's not even possible. Nice. At least I verified it without no clip. Hey, I didn't realize. Yeah. No, the swords are fake! No, I guess we should just leave it like that because it's funny. That's that. Thank you everyone for watching this level swap episode. Make sure you go and check out the other side on Jonathan's YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. He's bigger than me. You, you probably already know what it is. You've probably already subscribed. If you haven't already, subscribe to him. Subscribe to me. Like the videos and stuff because this is kind of hell to do. Working with someone else's style. <laughs> Have you got anything to say before we end? Like, doing this stuff is really fun it yeah. was something like th going through it building other other people's levels yeah it's a nice change That's from cool. just normal creating as well it puts you in like a completely yeah. different mindset and everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it man thank you so much for yeah. doing this with me as well you're a legend thank you for watching and uh have a good day